It's day three, PDAC 2025 floor, and it has been an explosive event. Everybody's talking critical minerals, and today we'll be speaking with Guy Brulet from Cerro de Pasco. How are you today? Very good, thank you for the invitation, Tracy. I have some very esteemed colleagues that love your story. Peru, recycling, is that it? Talk to me about the company. We want to understand the story better. So I'll go historically a little bit. Cerro de Pasco was at the time, for a long time, the largest gold copper silver mine in the world. Discovered by the Spanish in 1630, uh, they start operating that mine. That mine has never stopped its operation since. I don't know one mine in the world that has such a statistic. In 1906, Mr. J.P. Morgan himself made what they still call the greatest investment of the 20th century in Peru. He invested tens of millions of dollars into that project. The Americans have sent to Cerro de Pasco the best engineers, the best geologists, the best metallurgy, just the best equipment. Cerro de Pasco became the school of all the mine on the planet. Cerro de Pasco became the cash cow of the country. Cerro de Pasco became the largest gold, copper, silver mine in the world. So they extract over the years 300 million tons out of that mine. Some of it was processed, 75 million tons. The rest of it was stockpiled. What we own, Cerro de Pasco Resource shareholders, we own the mineral rights on the stockpile and the tailings. So we own the mineral rights on what we expect to be the largest above ground mineral resource on the planet. Okay, well, for starters, that's a very exciting story. I've been to Peru, which is a beautiful country. So you must have an extraordinary volume of tailings that you can basically process to pull out what? We're talking critical minerals, obviously, so, rare earths? You know, first of all, mainly silver, okay? Zinc, lead, gold, and copper. Okay? So, so we did an intense due diligence, okay? And we know precisely what's in there. We compile all the monthly reports from 1906 when Mr. J.P. Morgan made the investment until 1992 when they stopped sending material in these tailings. And uh, with those monthly reports, we end up with a resource of lead, zinc, copper, gold, and silver. If you put that in silver equivalent, it's 430 million ounces of silver equivalent. It's $14 billion US worth of metal above ground. So we are sure about that. We drilled it lately. Okay, so we perform a 40 holes drilling campaign. We just completed. We announced 30 holes. In extremis, what we find? Gallium, a lot of gallium. So we've got almost two ounces of gallium per ton. And we've got 20 grams of indium in addition. So that move your in situ value which at the time was $168 US per ton to $228 US per ton. What a spectacular summary for Cerro de Pasco. So what are you doing now? With what an amazing story, obviously you're doing road trips, road shows to, to get people to learn about your stock or so, what so is the priority right now? What, what, yeah, we're, we're trying to get coverage. We, we, we had the very, uh, long way to get the easement to perform that drilling. You're talking about Eric Sprott. We're doing roadshow not to raise money because Eric has funded the company. He owns 20% of the shares of Cerro de Pasco. And he's quite happy. We had lunch with him yesterday. We're still very happy. And he likes now the gallium. Well, obviously, Eric is a fan of silver. There's 1.66 ounce of silver per ton above ground. Let's recall, Tracy, that to produce today a base metal or a precious metal, 40% of the cost is mining. There's no mining there. So what are the plans next for your shareholders? So next, we've got enough money to go right to the end of a feasibility study. Okay? So there are two flotation facilities right beside. Okay? We can use them. They, are, they have old Jameson cell. We're going probably from historical tests we did, we're going probably to recover 41.5% of the metals. 
doing 10,000 ton per day. So with our model, we will end up making $145 million profit a year. So now with the gallium and the indium, we're thinking of building our own facility at 20,000 ton per day. So new facilities, we're probably going to recover north of 70% of the metals. So that move your $125 million profit a year to $633 million profit a year, US dollar. It's $1 billion profit, Canadian dollar. Well, I'll tell you, we at the Critical Minerals Institute have been following both gallium and indium for quite some time. This is a remarkable update for a story I actually know, knew nothing about until today. So I cannot tell you how delighted I am to meet you, Guy. Next step I forgot to tell you, we're doing metallurgical tests right now. Every percent we can recover, we're talking millions of dollar profit difference on the life of mine. One thing I want to add also, what I like about that project, there's so many winning conditions there. Cerro de Pasco, it's a community of 67,000 people at 4,400 meters above sea level in the Andes of Peru. That mine used to employ 7,000 people. Today, that mine barely employs 500 people. So we're going to create the wealth back in the community. We're going to take care of the acid water. There's a cost to that. In 25 years, there's no more acid water. We have cleaned up all that area. We're going to give to the government of Peru 28% income tax. We might produce sulfuric acid. Peru desperately needs sulfuric acid to do fertilizer. You see, this project is win, 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 win condition. I was talking with Stephen, we were with the the mayor of the community lately, they call him the Presidente. And uh, he told us, he says, we all want to send our children back to university, college and university in Lima. We just don't have the money anymore. He's pointing out these tailings and these stockpile, and he says, this is what's going to send the kids back to school. What a remarkable story. Can I just ask, I, I know you have an exceptional history in the industry, in the mining industry. How did you get your hands on this project? Well, Stephen had it, uh, my colleague that you know, Stephen had it since uh, 2011. It was a, uh, he bought it from an independent. The guy had take the claim, I think in 1971. And he had that since that time and Stephen and a group bought that permit and then we escalate we escalate uh, we list the company in 2017 so uh, this is how it well Stephen I knew was a shareholder of my former company and um, at some point six years ago I was going to retire stop working and Stephen flew to Montreal and he says would you like to do another one so uh, he got me out of my retirement I retired for one day there. I like that project. It just showed me that it's like it's pro-environmental, pro-social shareholder will make a, a lot of money. And I'm talking, check around here. There's no project like this one. Run around, do all the alleys at the PDAC. There's no project like this one. And for those of you out there, you may not, who are not part of the mining industry, getting a lunch with Eric Sprott is no small feat. And for further information, I recommend you go online and look up Guy Pollet's significant and exceptional career in the mining industry. And the gentleman he's referring to is Steven Zadko. And for more information on Cerro de Pasco, please go to the following website. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for the invitation again, Tracy.